<clears throat> okay, so we're going to look at the graphs of cosecant and secant, which are the reciprocals of sine and cosine, respectively. And because of that relationship, uh, it's actually not too hard to graph them. And uh, actually, to, to bring that point out, I'm going to I'm going to sketch very lightly the sine graph. Okay, you'll notice here I've got x values and then the values of sine for those x values. And then we're going to get the values of cosecant very easily because they're the reciprocals. Uh, it's the reciprocal of sine. <clears throat> but I'm also going to sketch the sine graph, okay, just so we can look at it. Um, so we know the sine graph looks... So I'm, I'm sketching it in a light color because I actually am going to be erasing this. Uh, whoops, it doesn't go up to 2. Right, it goes up to 1. So I'm, not, I'm actually, I'm almost going to like dashed line it. Not bad. Um, all right, so this is, this is the sine graph. We're going to use this kind of as like a crutch to help us graph cosec uh, cosecant. So there is the sine graph. Now we know that cosecant is the reciprocal of sine, so I need to take the reciprocal of all these values. So the reciprocal of 0 is, well, that's undefined. The reciprocal of 1 over root 2 is root 2. The reciprocal of 1 is 1. The reciprocal of root two, 1 over root 2 is root 2. The reciprocal of 0 is undefined. That reciprocal is negative root 2. The reciprocal is negative 1. So I'm just taking reciprocals, uh, the reciprocal of all these values. Okay, so now let's plot them. Well, when x is 0, cosecant is undefined. Well, what does that mean it, uh, in terms of the graph? It means that we have a vertical uh, asymptote. All right, so let's just get all the vertical asymptotes out of the way. At pi, it looks like there's another one. So at pi... There's another one. At uh, 2 pi, there's another one. And you can sort of continue the pattern. There's definitely going to be one at negative pi. And at negative 2 pi. Okay. So, uh, there are the asymptotes. Now, notice... Notice where they, they, the asymptotes lie in relation to the sine graph. Wherever the sine graph is equal to zero, that's where the asymptotes are for cosecant, which makes sense because the reciprocal of, of uh, zero is undefined. So the, the vertical tangents of cosecant go right through the zeros of sine. So that's useful. Uh, what other points do we got? We've got um, at, let's do the, the ones. Pi over 2, we got 1. So at pi over 2, we've got a 1. And also at 3 pi over 2, we've got a negative 1. So the red, remember, the red is cosecant. So definitely at negative pi over 2, I would envision that there would be a, a negative 1 and here a 1. Okay, so we kind of got the skeleton so far. Let's plot these points here. Pi over 4, we've got root 2, which is roughly equal to, as far as we're, you know, for our purposes, 1.4. Okay, we'll just say that. So at uh, pi over 4, which is right here, we're going to plot, plot 1.4, which is like roughly here. Right, that's pi over 4. And at 3 pi over 4, we also got root 2, so 3 pi over 4 would be here. Just think about, forget about the pi, it's like a fourth, a half, three fourths, three pi over four. Okay, now, okay, so if we use kind of our inductive reasoning here, I think over here we should get a similar picture. And down here, we're going to get sort of that opposite look. And now, here's where we can th we're going to think a little bit. We know that the it makes sense that at pi over two cosecant and and 
uh, sign are both equal to 1 because the reciprocal of 1 is 1. So this is where they're actually the same. But what about the sign values in between? What about like the sign values in between 0 and pi over 2? They're all less than 1, right? And if cosecant is the reciprocal, then we're taking the reciprocal of all these numbers. So like for instance, like somewhere here there's there's 1 half, right, on the y, on the y axis. And when you take the reciprocal of 1 half, what do you get? You get 2. Right? So you get 2. So I'd have to plot that point here. Right, if this is where, let's say it equal 2 right here. If sine's equal to 2 here, cosecant would be equal to, I'm sorry, if sine's equal to 1 half here, cosecant would be equal to 2. So the point is, all the sine values are in between 0 and 1. When you take the reciprocal of those numbers, you get bit numbers bigger than 1. And the closer the y values are to 0, right, think of numbers like a millionth, a trillionth, the bigger the reciprocal is going to be. So as sine is going down towards zero here, cosecant is going up. So this is the picture, right? And that reasoning follows everywhere, uh, not just in this one little section, right? It, it, the same argument can be made over here for the negatives. Okay. So again, the yellow, the yellow is the sine graph, and the red is our cosecant graph. And uh, later, I'll do an example on just how to graph you know, basic cosecant and secant graphs. But the point is, the asymptotes of cosecant go through the zeros of sine. And the they they meet at one and negative one, and when sine goes down to zero, cosecant flips and goes up. All right. So I'm gonna just kind of erase the sine crutch, just to kind of remind us that that wasn't that wasn't what we meant to graph. Okay. Now some notation. Let's talk about domain. Well, this this pattern is gonna go on it forever and in both directions, right? Now it's it's tempting to start to want to break up all these intervals. Okay, the domain is negative 2 pi to negative pi, soft brackets, and then negative pi to 0, and then 0, right? But we'd be doing that forever. So a better way to write this domain is just to say, okay, it's everywhere. It's everywhere, negative infinity to infinity, except, well, except at the asymptotes, right? Right? It's not at, at the asymptotes, uh, there, the domain does not exist. So, except for when x is equal to, so I'm going to say it's negative infinity to infinity as long as x is not equal to. And now we've got to find a way to describe an infinite number of asymptotes. So here's the way we do it. Um, start with the first one. What's the first one? It's right here at 0. So x can equal 0. And now let's describe how much they're going up by. When I say like going up by, I mean what's the distance in between each each of the asymptotes? Well, the distance between these two is pi, and the distance between these two is pi. So they're going up by multiples of pi. So x cannot equal 0 plus pi, and then to express multiples, I'm going to do pi times n, where n is we're going to say, use this big fancy symbol, which is, just means integer. Okay. Integers are numbers just, uh, integers, just as a side note, are the numbers 0, 1, oops, 0, 1, 2, 3, etc., but then also negative 1, negative 2, etc. Those are all the integers. So again, all this is saying, and again, think back to like Algebra 1, where you had like a problem where it was like, Joe joined a gym and it was, you know, $0 to join and then, you know, $20 per month, right? And the equation of his cost was 0 plus 20n. That's all we're doing here. We just, we're describing where the asymptotes are uh, in that way. We're saying there's one at 0 and then there's one at pi and then 2 pi and then 3 pi. 
So as long as I keep adding n pi, I'm going to get a new asymptote. And I can go negative direction too, negative 1 pi, negative 2, so n can be negative. So the domain is everything except x not equal to all the asymptotes. That's the best way to describe the domain. Uh, the range, we'd say negative infinity to, looks like negative 1, hard bracket, and then 1 to infinity. The x-intercepts, there are none. The asymptotes, well, we just spent a couple minutes describing the asymptotes. They're at x equal to 0 plus i n, where n is an integer. Right, that's that's where the asymptotes are. Local extrema, um, you know, local local max. You know what? I'm going to scratch this because we'll deal with this in class. We'll deal with local extrema in class. I just this is going too long. I don't want this video to go too much longer. We got a good discussion. This was a good reference to, to to refer to in terms of how to graph cosecant and how to appropriately um, appropriately describe the domain range, uh, x-intercepts, asymptotes, etc. You'll be responsible for that. Okay.